Hey guys, April and Rocco here in the Gumboot Garden today. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> um, there are a, quite a few things that need to be accomplished today. Things are getting a bit messy in the garden and we need to sort them out before they become a bigger issue than they already are. So I have created a list. I think we're going to start at the top and work our way down. We've got quite a few things that I think are having a lot of trouble with powdery mildew, early blight, things like that, that I need to try and eradicate before we just lose the entire plant. The first thing I do want to tackle are the tomatoes in the tomato bed. So that's the indeterminate tomatoes. And the reason I want to tackle those first is because we have things like this happening. The birds are starting to get to those nearly ripe tomatoes and it's happening quite all over the place. So I don't want them to get all of my tomatoes. So I need to hurry up and net these and all of the tomatoes in my garden really that I can. I'm not sure how much netting I have, but do as much as possible to stop them from eating my tomatoes because the tomatoes are like the thing I wanted to grow a ton of this year. So we need to protect those. But before we get these bird netted, I need to go through and trim all of the diseased leaves off of these tomatoes because there are a lot. And then I need to tie them up because they're starting to hang really low and they need to be trellised now because for the past like six weeks, I have done not a thing to these tomatoes. So we need to find out kind of what's going on in here. And you're gonna help? Are you gonna help me? Yeah? <laughs> and we've got all sorts of leaves in here that are just yellowing and gross. And we need to cut them all out and leave just that nice good stuff so we can keep getting more and more tomatoes throughout the summer because summer is like, we've just hit the main part of summer. So I can't have my garden just kind of die on me now. So you're not helping me then? You're just gonna chill out here and watch me do all the work? Typical. Before we move on to anything else, even within that bed, um, I'm just gonna go and wash my hands and wash my scissors off because I don't wanna contaminate any of the healthy parts of the plants or any of the other plants that I might be working with today. So we're gonna take a lot of um, time to just go back and forth to the house to wash our hands properly and wash our scissors properly. I'm just gonna use laundry powder to clean my hands, clean the scissors. The great thing about the laundry powder is it gets off all of the green brown gunk that you get when you um, when you deal with tomatoes like this here. Now I'm just going to go through the task of tying up all of those tomatoes because I've just kind of let them sprawl out everywhere. Okay, honestly, tying up that whole entire tomato bed took way longer than I originally intended. And um, somebody here is getting a bit hot. Are you hot? Yes, so <laughs> I'm gonna bring him inside. That's the end of Rocco, but um, I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna move on to the next tomato bed and yeah, try and get things sorted in that one. In this bed, 
I've got a few, oh, excuse me, these are mine. <laughs> I was able to pick a few um, Dr. Witchies. They're very, very small, but let's get Rocco in the house and get on to our next task. Next thing we're going to do is not the tomatoes, but the zucchini. I think that's the next most major thing that we need to do. We need to hard prune these zucchinis because they have so much powdery mildew on them that even those little yellow and black ladybugs are all over them. They are actually eating that powdery mildew, which helps but also doesn't help at the same time because even though they're eating it, uh, they're still walking around on it and around all of the plant. So they're actually spreading it as well. So we need to hard prune these zucchinis and get that milk mixture on them. I desperately need to get inside and wash my hands. I can actually feel all of the like powdery mildew on my fingertips. So I need to wash my hands, wash my scissors again. I'm gonna wash all up my arms because I know they were like brushing up against me. And then we're gonna come out and we're gonna tie them up and hope for the best. I'm gonna make some milk and water mixture as well to spray on them. Oh boy, it is getting hot out here. So I am not going to do the milk mixture on the zucchinis or squash or tomatoes right now. I'm gonna wait until later tonight, even though you should be doing it in the morning. It's too late for that. But I'm gonna do it tonight. Um, maybe top it up in the morning if it looks like it had too much like dew on it or anything. Um, but right now I'm gonna put the tomato netting on the bed that I had finished the tomato bed and then we're gonna go inside for a little bit just so I don't burn to a crisp. I went inside the other day and completely fell asleep hard until it was dark outside and then I did some other things in the house. But yesterday I came out just for a short period of time because it was so hot and I put some bird netting around the other tomato bed. And today I have a couple hours before I have to go pick everyone up from the airport because they went away for uh, some BMXing over the weekend. But, um, and I think it's supposed to rain this afternoon. It's already starting to rain a little bit. So I wanna get a couple things done before I need to go and get everyone. So I want to cut some of my calendula flowers so I can dehydrate them. And I also want to sort out this trellis that's behind me. So I'm not sure how much you can see from here, but it needs to be, the leaves need to be trimmed up a little bit. There's some that are um, just starting to die off. And I need to tie the tomatoes up to the trellis because they're leaning away from the trellis at the minute. I think because the sun kind of comes from this side. And they, there are so many tomatoes on those tomato plants that I need to make sure that I tie them up now before the tomatoes get too heavy and they kind of flop the other way. However, the only way I think I can sort that out is I'm gonna have to actually climb onto this raised bed, which I highly don't advise that you do. Don't, um, it's not good to step on your raised beds and compact that soil. However, 
there's no other way that I can get to those plants. So I'm gonna be as delicate and as quick and not move around very much as I can be so that I'm not compacting too much of the soil on that bed. But we only have a couple hours, so let's get this thing started. There are a few calendulas in here in this tomato bed. A lot of them are dying off. Uh, it's starting to get very hot with the sun and calendula prefers a lot of like rainy, like spring, winter, um, fall, <laughs> not so much summer, but um, a lot of the flowers are dying off. I'm just gonna let all of the seeds just go all over my bed and I will hopefully have like heaps and heaps of calendula all over the place. But also um, I'm gonna cut some of those other ones. So I need to like get in here somehow. Let's see what I can do. Just cutting off some of those dead ones and then grabbing the others. You know what else I see in here? On my watermelon plant, there's a few flowers that are open. So there's a male flower here. So there's our male flower. This is also a male flower down here. But then that one is a female flower. So I'm going to try and hand pollinate these. But the female flower is so small. I've never done this before. But we're going to try it with this one. We'll just take one off. Just peeling off the petals. Doing this similar, similarly to how I would do a zucchini. I'm assuming that's right. So then we're just left with the middle part. And I guess we just go in here and spread it around. <laughs> and I think that's it. There's an awful lot of pollen there. It's covering. The female flower now. So if that hasn't pollinated, then I don't know how to do it. <laughs> That's one of the first female flowers I've seen on the watermelon, so hopefully we're gonna get a watermelon now. Um, it's I don't know how late the season can go. Oh, uh, maybe April. I don't know how even, I don't know anything about watermelons, so I don't know how long it takes for a watermelon to grow or when they'll start to die off in New Zealand, I know nothing. I mean, considering how big watermelons are, I feel like these plants are just tiny. I'm surprised that they can support a watermelon. So I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know, but I've hand pollinated something. So hopefully it will actually take and we'll be able to see and grow a watermelon. There aren't too many calendula flowers out here. It's primarily marigolds, uh, which, are looking beautiful. I'm not a huge fan of marigolds, but they look so nice this year. I love how they're actually like tall. Typically, I think I've had the French variety, which was shorter, but I'm really liking these tall ones. But the calendulas, I dehydrate, and then I can put them in teas or put them in oil and make salves with them. I haven't done that yet, but I do have intentions of doing that this year, so we'll see how that goes. Does anyone know, can you do anything with these marigolds? because I have so many. It would be really cool if I could do something with them. Um, I haven't looked it up. It's something that I'm gonna have to look up and see if I can kind of experiment with things. But, you know, if you guys know of anything, put it down in the comments and, you know, I'll give it a go. Actually, I forgot I have all of these calendula flowers as well. I put the bird netting up yesterday around this big tomato bed and I had intentions of cutting these calendula flowers first and completely forgot and then it was all wrapped so watch me struggle to try and get these calendula ones out i'm sure the birds can easily get in and out they've been getting in and out of my blueberry netting um so the birds can probably get in and out of here better than i can but let's see if i can get some of these flowers aren't they beautiful my fingers are so sticky from the calendula flowers, so I need to go inside, wash my fingers, and put them in the dehydrator. But in the meantime, before I go, I should probably pick up this guy as well. 
that's a gherkin that's grown a bit too large. I already have the dehydrator going, but we're just going to turn that off so we can get this calendula onto the trays. I just put them upside down on the trays because it helps keep the flower open. And then after a while, I flip them the other way around. The flowers have definitely gotten a lot smaller since when they were in their peak. When they were in their peak, the flowers, each of the flowers were huge, but now they're all little guys. So they're definitely on their way out. But hopefully with these come more with the amount of deadheading I've been doing and leaving so many of the dead flowers in there, we should have like way too many calendula when the temperature dies down a little bit and it starts to rain a bit more. So I'm doing some tomatoes in here. I can show you those. So these are all cherry tomatoes. So what I do is I put my, ch I cut my cherry tomatoes in half. I sprinkle them with some salt and just dehydrate them until they're very, very crispy. Then I store them into little jars. And when I'm ready, I will just re-soften the tomatoes for a few minutes. And then you put them in oil and with some seasoning. And it's like sun-dried tomatoes and it's so good. For most things that I dehydrate, you just wanna put them on for for 35 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that converts to Fahrenheit. I'll put it here. Um, and then I just put them on for a long time until they're like fully dried. It takes me a lot longer than what the manual says. I think it's because the air is so humid here um, and in our house because we don't have AC or anything like that. So um, yeah, it takes quite a bit of time to get these dehydrated, but Let's get back outside. We need to sort out that trellis. I just noticed something. I was about to hop up onto this bed here and I noticed, so I have a little eggplant growing. It is not the type of eggplant that I thought I was growing. I thought I was growing those big black beauties, the massive like dark purple ones. That doesn't look like that to me. That looks like the, <laughs> the long ones that are well, that color, long and skinny ones. I thought I planted the other ones, but I guess that explains why I had like bought eggplant seeds, but also had on my list to then buy eggplant plants, which I, th I thought I had to buy the like big dark purple ones. So that, yeah mistake on my part I guess but I swear I looked it up on the seed website and I swear it showed me that they were supposed to be the big dark purple ones I'm gonna have to check that again anyways let's get into this bed we're in and guess what <laughs> I forgot to turn on that camera so I have to get out and back in again so then you guys can see what I'm actually doing well if I can get this one attached and tied then that will be out of my way. So what I'm noticing are the Brad's Atomic Grape Tomatoes are struggling with like powdery mildew and they're starting to get quite weak. There's a ton of tomatoes on them, but they're starting to, the plants themselves are starting to get quite weak, where this purple cocktail is absolutely insane. I don't think I've ever had a tomato look so healthy before, <laughs> which might not be saying much about my growing skills, but this looks so good. It does have a bit of powdery mildew on its, um, on its stem, and the lower leaves definitely need cutting off, but my God, it looks healthy. And this also has tons of tomatoes growing on it. That's 
done. Now, I need to trim, oh no, I've got this one. Don't think you guys can see this one, but it's another huge, <laughs> see it now, can't Yeah, that was on the ground, so tall. Get a few more strings, I need to tie this one up, then we'll be done with this archway. And then we need to sort out this bed here. While I'm up here, I need to show you how many main leaders <laughs> this purple cocktail plant has and how beautiful it looks. It has one, two, three. This one comes up in splits into two other big ones. Then this one splits off into two. And then that splits off into another one. And the tomatoes on it. I mean, look at those tomatoes, all of these, all of the ones in here, there, back there, up. Like, holy cow. The Brad's Atomic Grape is doing quite well too. Um, that has quite a few tomatoes on it. It just hasn't grown as tall like this purple cocktail giant that we have. Brad's Atomic Grape stops like around in here. The purple cocktail one keeps going way up. Not sure if you can see this, but there's like a massive divot here from where I was standing and over here where the soil compacted a bit from me standing in there. So that's what we don't want to happen. And look at what I see running away. <laughs> he obviously fell off of the plants when I was tying them all up. Oh gosh, we need to get him out of here. There's just a couple other little maintenance things I wanna do in this bed. There's a couple more tomatoes that just need to be tied up a little bit. They're called rambling tomatoes and I honestly have just let them ramble all over this bed. Because some of the leaves are starting to get a bit of disease, I just wanna pull them up, especially before it starts to rain this week. They're absolutely littered with tomatoes. The birds have actually eaten like half of them already, but I just need to try and tie them up and we'll sort out bird netting later. I think I have a couple days before they get red enough where the birds will go after them. I'm officially out of my bamboo stakes, so rather than going to the store and buying some more, I just walked around the yard and I found a big stick that I just kind of like snapped in two. And we're gonna use this to tie up this last tomato. You just need to be careful when you're sticking it into the ground because we don't wanna damage any of those roots that are already in there. There we are. I just want to check our list to see how much more I've gotten done. Okay, so we've got all those. The milk, the zucchinis, I did do. Harvest potatoes, done. Prune and milk, the gherkins, I have not done that. And they need to be done soon because they are dying. Prune, determinate tomatoes, done. Milk, the tomatoes, I did the indeterminate ones. Milk the other squash, I've done that. Plant beans, plant sunflowers, pull the garlic, put tool on grapes, no. So there's still heaps to do and that's not even my whole list, but it'll all get done in time. I'm not overly concerned. I've gotten the main things done that I was worried about besides the gherkins. Um, so I've sorted all of the tomatoes. They're my like main crop this year, I'm hoping at least. I've sorted the zucchinis just so we can keep getting some more coming through. The next main thing on my list is to go sort out those grapes because they're getting larger. They're gonna start to turn purple soon and then the birds are gonna be at them like crazy.
Is that the right one there? Right. That's green. You can check that one. Oh, that's a nice one. Paint it. Yeah, go on. How is it? Sweet. Yellowy green. Oh. So when you're growing Cape gooseberries, you want them to be that nice, like bright color. If you see any that are either dark green or even a green like this one, um, it's like a yellowish green, it's almost ripe. It's not going to taste very good. And they do have, they do, they are a little bit poisonous before they're fully ripe. So you really wanna make sure that you're getting the bright yellow ones and that's like the sweet spot that you want. Oh my God, that's huge. Um, unfortunately though, it looks like we're getting a lot of ones that where the husk is dried out, but the actual berry itself is not ripe. So, oh, oh man. So I don't know what's going on here. Maybe it's not getting enough sun here. That's a good one, I can see it. Yeah. That's big. All right, so we are just over here. Kaylin did plant the beans. You guys know better than I do how they were planted. So we will see how many actually sprout and come up. 100% Kaylin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's saying 100% are gonna grow. So we'll check back in later in, probably in our garden tour and see how all the beans are growing. The one thing that we do need to do right now is um, water them a little bit, water them in, and then they'll be all set. So how did we go? Good. We didn't get that many though. They're massive. Oh yeah, let's see. Oh, that one's well, not that too one. massive. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Oh yeah, that one looks good. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully later in the summer we'll have a lot. a lot at the tops all the way up, hey? Yeah. The next thing I wanted to do was plant some sunflowers. So we're just along this back fence and we're just gonna fill this in with sunflowers. And then where those big sunflowers were already growing in my garden in the um, raised beds, we're gonna replant there in hopes that we can get another succession of huge sunflowers growing around the arches before summer ends. What's that, Freya? We should plant them there. Oh, where the potatoes were? Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, go ahead. There's what, three seeds left? Yeah. You can go ahead and put um, them wherever you want in there. Anywhere? Anywhere. Look at that concentration. The seriousness in the garden. Hmm. Alright, go on, check off the ones we've just done. What's that you're checking off? Plant some flowers and plant beans. Perfect. What's the next thing we need to do? Pull garlic. <laughs> She's absolutely desperate to pull the garlic, and I hate to tell her, but there's nothing to really pull. The garlic didn't grow, but okay. we'll go have a look. This is the sad looking garlic that Freya was <laughs> desperate to pull. It, none of my garlic grew well at all this year. I'm not really sure why, but we'll get in there and see if we got anything, even a little clove, but mm, I've pulled all the rest and there hasn't been 
anything really usable. Be careful but that it doesn't break up, so try and dig around it a little bit first because we don't want it to pull up. <laughs> Biggest one. Woo! Look at what I've got! <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna go our separate ways and pull out our biggest clove and we'll come back and see who is the actual winner. Okay, I think I saw the biggest one, but I've got two. I've got two, hold up. Okay. No, yeah, I can only have one. Okay, kaylin has got three. <laughs> the fact that they're all fitting in our fist like shows That's that they're not, not that big. <laughs> okay. Kaylin's fitting it with two, but I don't know. Now hold on, wait, I'll show mine first, but not to you guys. I'm gonna show it to them. Okay. I don't know. This is my garlic. Look how massive. I, I can't see. No, I can't see. All right, who's up next? Kaylin next? Yeah. yeah. Freya. All right, Freya, you're up. This is my massive garlic. Yeah. My we'll massive see. ass one. We'll see. Okay. All right. Now, you guys all know who the winner is. None of us, really. But, <laughs> but let's see. Who has the biggest garlic? Put yours up next to mine. Phrase one. And then. And win. That's a tie. Well, <laughs> no, I, that's not. I definitely didn't win. Oh. Yeah, I think Freya wins this one. Kaylin, you were quite close. But although. But I'm just the winner. None of us have any good garlic. Like, seriously, it's just one big clove. You know what? The losers have to eat their garlic. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Yeah, in dinner, maybe, tonight. No, no, not in the dinner, just raw. No, wait, she wouldn't have had this. She didn't come up with that rule until after she found out she won. <laughs> April ran off, so we can do the rest of the work. Are you ready for your next mission? No. Are you ready? No. They are ready, even though they say no. They're ready. You. You. And you. And you. Are gonna go through. And your task is to find the biggest grape bunch that you can. On your mark and set, go. Hurry up, hurry up, she's running. <laughs> Don't pick it, just look for it. I found one. Yeah, but is it the biggest one? Yes, oh, I found one. Be careful, be careful. Oh no. Actually, no, here. We'll go to Freya first. No, no, no. No, nope. I'm still looking. <laughs> All right, Freya, show okay. us the biggest bunch that you have. Ooh, how nice does that look? That's Can a I pretty eat? Big bunch. Can I try one? No, they're supposed to be green. Uh, they're supposed to be purple. Kaylin. Oh, darn it. Whoa. Now hold on. Does he have two bunches there? He's no. got two bunches. Be, yes, careful, he be careful. Which one is your bunch? This one. Okay. Oh, he's got a lot of bunches there, but that's Kaylin's bunch. Oh, it's bigger. Yeah, Freya wins again. Kaylin, we need to get you something. You need to win one of these. We can't have her winning all the time. I, I cover this whole thing. There's like four bunches in there. No, there's more than four. You should just cover the whole plant. I don't have enough stuff for that. Oh, gotta get a rough estimate of what we need here. Is this your job? Yeah, this is my job. Yes. All right, so what we're going to do is I have a tool that I bought from the craft store and some twine. I'm just going to wrap a lot of the larger 
bunches of grapes so that the birds don't get them because last year we didn't get any grapes because the birds got them. So we're gonna prevent that from happening this time. So if you come in here, all I'm doing is I found this bunch here. It's like three or four bunches. We're just gonna wrap it around. I've never done this before, so hopefully it works out. <laughs> I wrapped it around so you can see that the bunches are all, the bunch is all in there. And I'm just gonna take my twine. Let me get that leaf out of there. And that's it, we have our bunch. What if it gets bigger, won't it? What will happen? Well, that's a good point. So we'll pull some of this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll pull some of this out so they can grow a little bit bigger. Very good point. Lucky I'm here with my massive brain. <laughs> Lucky. Thanks, Fran. Okay. We've got another one. The one I found. Yes, the one you found. Alright, do we have some space in there? There, we have our second bunch. Hopefully that will grow. And we can protect. Alright, the kids have gone into the blackberries. And they claim that there are some that are ripe now, and they've done another. And they've done another competition to see who has the biggest blackberry. Three, <laughs> two, two, one. <laughs> Hold it out. Let me see. Oh yeah. Oh. We've had a friend join us in the garden. He scared the daylights out of me. He's lucky I didn't step on him. He's real close to where we were, right behind us. Tiny. Bumblebees. You know, you're small. What are you doing out here? Oh God, we found a new pet. Garlic done. Grapes done. And that's all today at the Gumby Garden. <laughs> yep, that's it guys. And that's it for this video for today. I will catch you in the next one. See you guys.